So if you notice, while well, filming location, well, it's kind of a mess over there. So we're filming it today. Yeah, okay, so today's video is uh, my ranking of every album by Twisted Sister. Now I have, I don't know if I've done a ranking before. I think I did one for Pink Floyd, or at least an all albums reviewed or something. Uh, instead of doing an all albums reviewed, I decided I'll just do a ranking of. Uh, Twisted Sister, because uh, I like to kind of talk about each album, and there's only seven, so screw it. You can uh, you can see which ones are my favorites. Now, um, of course, um, of course, it's it's all my opinion, of course, you know, and uh, and you know, like I'm, I'm well, I've been listening to Twisted Sister for a couple of years, um, and delved into their catalog, and so um. I'm more, but I'm you could consider me more of a new, a newer type type person to the Twisted Sister. Like while other people have had like what, thirty um, almost forty years of listening to some of these albums and stuff. Uh, like um, but yeah, there's um, and I'll just go ahead and say there isn't an album I particularly feel bad on its own merits or something like that. But, um, but I will say there is albums I prefer over others, and, uh, yeah, so my number seven, uh, I really did not want to put this at number seven, but I was, I was looking, uh, but I decided, uh, I'll just, I'll put it here, and so it's, uh, Still Hungry, which, um, might come as a shock to some people, although I've met people recently that also put it at least number seven or number six, you know, most people usually would put Lovers for Suckers at number seven. The thing is, is that, um, Still Hungry, though very good, it, it is, you know, it is a re-recording, of course, of Stay Hungry, and, uh, and then, you know, in some versions it has bonus tracks, um, that Still Hungry, Still Hungry does, and, um, it is a good album. It sounds really good, but I just think like I just think comparing it to others, I I just think I put it at the bottom, whatever. Sadly, and um, although I do really like the re-recordings of all the songs, I kind of do prefer the original the original versions, as you will see. Um, it is more raw, more like stripped down, which is uh, very good. I will say that's my very big pro. Of course, um, I think I think I think the re-recordings of some songs, like you know, the big hits, like "We're Not Gonna Take It," and you know, uh, I like the I, lo I particularly like the re-recording of "Burn in Hell." That is a really good uh, re-recording. Um, all right. So next up is uh, "Twisted Christmas," which is their final album from uh, 2006. Now, "Twisted Christmas," um. I feel like I should have put this higher, but, and, um, and, uh, that's the thing, it's kind of hard to rank some of these. I know my number one and my number two, and my number three, but, um, the other ones was hard to rank them, because, um, really they could all switch around, you know. Um, but Twisted Christmas, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, them taking, like, famous Christmas songs we all know. Uh, changing up some of the lyrics and stuff, adding heavy metal to it, you know, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, do I just, do I just think it's one of their best? No, but it's a lot of fun. It definitely the best, the best metal Christmas album that I can think of at the top of my head. Uh, yeah. So at number five, I'm gonna put Love is for Suckers. And, um... Lovers for Suckers could technically be called the worst Twisted Sister album, but the best D. Snyder album, maybe. Um, but you know, there's some there's some weird like charm to this album. I think it's I think I actually like the sound of it. I like this. I like the songs that are on it, and uh, it, yeah, it's just. Um, but it's very different than their uh, normal style, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of like the. Um, if I had to make comparisons, it's kind of like, uh, the final Emperor album, the final, uh, not the final, the, the Black Sabbath album, Seven Star, which is supposed to be an Iomi album. 
And the final one for almost supposed to be a Nissan album. Um, kind of like those, where those are not meant to be like the band albums, but the studio said, oh, you should have to do this. And that's what they did with uh, Love Is For Suckers. Is it a bad album? Is it god awful? No, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I still recommend it. Um, so yeah, I put it at number five. Um, Love Is For Suckers. At number four, I might get some flack for putting an album above this, but uh, Under The Blade. Um, Under The Blade is a great debut album. It's got a great raw sound to it. A great raw sound to it. But... You know, there is some stuff in it that you know, I just think that, you know, it could have been improved over time. And you know what? You know what? Plus the sister definitely improved some of the, some of the stuff over time with it, you know? But it's a great debut album. Probably one of the better debut albums there is, Son of the Blade. Um, yeah. So that's what I'll put at uh, number four. Great songs, too. And also a great cover of, you know, them going, like, all posing and stuff. <laughs> I like that. Um, at number three, I will put, uh, I'll put Come Out and Play. I was considering putting this in number two, um, but I think number two is a bit more, is, is definitely a much more legacy, definitely very classic. Um, and come, but come Out and Play is very, very good. Uh, a lot of great songs on that, you know, The Fire Still Burns. Another awesome track. I think that's probably the one of the best tracks on the album. Um, overall, just great. It's not really too much I'll say. I'll still say that it is a bit of a. I will say that it is like, like it sounds very much cleaner than the first three albums. And you know, the first three albums are much like heavier, a little bit more raw. And uh, I kind of liked the production on those three first three a bit before, but it is a uh, yeah, but it is a great album. Come out and play. That's my number three. At number two, I will put. I was gonna say this is a hard one to be honest, because again, the top two are easily your best albums. It's just really where you place them. But um. I think they progressed, uh, like, a lot more, especially for them, their career and everything, on this, on their number, on the one I put in number one. So, on number two, I put, you can't, you can't kill rock and roll, or you can't stop rock and roll. It's, you know, keep, uh, I don't have a paper with me, so I always forget to, which, which one it is, because, you know, there's album in the song. But anyways, you can't stop rock and roll is a classic, raw, heavy album, you know. Like, you know, everyone likes the song, the kids are back, you know, all that. Other great songs on here. You know, it's just, go listen to the album. It's a great album. <laughs> it's really good. But at number one, you know, it's kind of a popular choice. And usually I don't stick to the popular choices, but, you know, it's kind of... Stay, stay hungry, man. That is a great, that is a great album. No, I do want to buy the rest of them. That's the only one I actually like, own, own. But that is just a solid album, you know. I never need to hear we're not going to take it. Not again, but like not for a while. Uh, because I've heard it too much already. Uh, of course, you know, I like, you know, Burning Hell is one of my favorite songs by them in Horror Terrier. Uh, Again, I want to rock, you know, I could, I, I, you know what, I can still do I want to rock. That's a pretty good song. And, you know, other great songs in here, too, on the, like, the Beast, SMF, and all that. Classic. Just classic heavy metal. And really, like, and it's probably their best production on an album, maybe, you know, if you want to, if you want to talk about that in the comments, feel free. Feel free. Anyways, um, anyways, you know what, I'd actually, I'd, I'd encourage you guys to check out every single T.S. album. As long as you're listening to T.S., it's all that matters. <laughs> uh, or as long as you enjoy T.S., it's all that matters. If you don't enjoy T.S., that's also fine, you know. It's, not everyone likes to say, not everyone likes the same stuff. And you know, if you disagree with me, you know, that's, 
that's completely fine. You know, we all have different opinions and stuff. Should I put Love is for Suckers up high? You know, feel free to talk in the comments. Feel free to put your own rankings in the comments, you know? You know, this is about discussion and stuff. Not about, you know, arguing. Not about arguing causing wars and stuff. There am I. So yeah, number seven. Still hungry. Number number six. Uh, close to Christmas. Number five. Love is for Suckers. Number four. Under the Blade. Number three, Come Out and Play. Number two, You Can't... I want to say it's You Can't Stop Rock and Roll. I keep forgetting the title. And number one, Stay Hungry. So that's my ranking of Twisted Sister, and I thank you all for watching. You know, and this is, uh, again, it's a really good band. I really like them. Uh, is there any other bands you want me, you guys want me to review anytime, you know? Uh, I generally like to... St uh, do bands where all their albums are like kind of available some of the bands I listen to well <laughs> they, they, their albums keep getting unlisted and stuff and all this and you know that sucks um, I'm hoping to do uh, Van Halen next uh, I don't know if anyone here likes uh, Van Halen but I'm hoping to do a Van Halen ranking uh, which what is the best Van Halen albums and you know what I already have it thought out of my head Thanks for watching.